Kidnapped, trafficked, and sold for $250, the story of a Kashmiri child bride. Al Jazeera recently published in-depth reporting on the trafficking and forced marriages of Indian women in India-administered Kashmir. Young women were typically promised jobs and a better life, but were then instead sold as brides. Interviews with victims were featured. One of these women was 29-year-old uh, Nazima, kidnapped from her home state of West Bengal and then transferred 1,600 kilometers away to Kashmir, where she was forced to marry a man 20 years older than her who paid the traffickers $250 for a bride. Although Nazima was treated well by her husband, another woman, Arshida, who was 13 years old when she was bought, suffered from domestic abuse. Human trafficking is a major problem in India with over 1,700 cases re recorded by government bodies in 2020 alone. However, this is believed to just be the tip of the iceberg and the problem is believed to be vastly underreported. Many individuals and human rights groups are working to raise awareness about the issue and promote better enforcement of anti-trafficking laws. Okay, can you give us a little bit more detail about this? Yeah, so um, wait, give me one second to pull up my notes. I thought that this was important to cover because our lovely editor, D, everyone say thank you, D, um, sent this article to me and raised it to my attention. And um, just it's it's a very complex issue because some of this happens because in India until I can't remember when, but India used to have it be legal for you to abort a fetus on the basis of its sex. And because of traditionalism, that meant that families would abort female babies. And then it has resulted in a, dis, uh, a, uh, a major gender disparity. And what this means is that there will be entire villages where there are men who cannot find someone to marry. And, and then especially when caste comes into the issue, that makes it even more complex. And so basically, there are women that are sold as slave brides and trafficked all across India to make up for the fact that there are no men, I mean, excuse me, no women in certain areas because they just kill all the female babies to the point, fetuses, um, to the point that it is now illegal. I don't know if it's across the country or just in some states. It's illegal to do ultrasounds looking for the sex of a baby because of how severe the problem is. And the government literally has an interest in preventing femicide because it has such, a, it, it has huge social um, consequences, but also economic consequences as well. So the state needs to interfere. Um, the other issue that comes into this is also some other forms of traditionalism. So for example, a lot of men will marry someone who was trafficked to be a bride. They will buy their bride because if they were trying to have a marriage in the normal traditional way, they cannot afford the dowry. They cannot afford the meher. They cannot afford all of the costs that are associated with doing it the right way or um, because of the expectations of the community and da da da. Um, about how you're supposed to do your ceremony, your ceremony, your nika, whatever. And so they will instead buy a girl for a fraction of the cost and not have to worry about any of that. Um, and it's really sad because a lot of these women are taken um, from uh, West Bengal, actually. Apparently, West Bengal is a huge hub for human trafficking and transported all across the states. And apparently there's a lot going on in Kashmir and then they're in this other state and then they have, they don't speak the language. And so they're abandoned and they have no ability to leave because they can't navigate the society that they're in because they don't speak Kashmiri at all. And um, sometimes they are children when this happens, sometimes they're a little bit older, but a lot of them are tempted with saying, oh, you're, we're gonna help you go work for an NGO. We're gonna help you go work for a nonprofit. And then they're tempted to a different location. Some of them are drugged and then transported all the way across the country. And they have no means of escaping. And um, there really are no 
there's no recourse for these women because when they try to leave, they can't go back to where they came from because there's a stigma surrounding being trafficked because they're, regardless of what actually happened to you, people are going to assume that you were being prostituted essentially. So then you're complete shame to your society and you're just, you're stuck in the situation. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for that. All right. Uh, get my best selling book. Why there is no God for free. Click on the link for it in the description.